So this is a video with a question for Dan McClellan. All right, let's see it. Uh, I really appreciate your content. You diving into the historical aspects of um, religion and philosophy and biblical text is fascinating to me. Thanks, man. I appreciate hearing that. It means a lot. And there are two things that I've always wondered, and I figured you'd be the person to ask this. Um, one, where did the concept of humans becoming angels when they passed on come from? Because I always understood that humans and angels would be different species. So two things here. Uh, angels were absolutely considered to be of a different kind from humanity. And this is what actually led to debates within uh, Greco-Roman period and then rabbinic Judaism that bled into Christianity regarding the sexual compatibility of angels and humans because Genesis 6 had been reinterpreted by the Greco-Roman period as a reference to angels mating with human women. And then there were some rabbinic authors who were thinking, wait a minute, how can angels be sexually compatible with humans? And so they came up with different ways to interpret what was going on. And one of the interpretations that arose in light of these debates was the idea that the B'nai Elohim, the children of God in Genesis 6, were not even angels, but were just humans. But another thing that arose is that this was considered inappropriate for angels and humans to be crossing those sexual boundaries. And this is actually what Jude 1-7 is about. A lot of people understand this to be referring to homosexuality sexuality when it says that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah was pursuing sarcoseteras, different flesh. But that's not about homosexuality at all. It is about humans pursuing sexual intercourse with angels, which was considered inappropriate. So they are different species. However, within the Greco-Roman period, you also have some speculation about theosis in the afterlife, about divinization, where humans are becoming angels. And you see this idea of humans transformed into angels in some of the Dead Sea Scrolls. You see it in some other apocryphal and pseudepigraphical literature. Second Baruch, for instance, the apocryphal text in the 51st chapter talks about people being transformed into angels. So while there was uh, an attempt to keep these categories distinct, there was also this notion that you kind of graduated, were elevated, were exalted from human status to angelic status, at least the righteous were after death. And two, where did the idea that Jesus as we know him is God and not just the Son of God? Because there seems to be a lot of people who confuse Jesus the Son of God and Jesus being God. Hey, thank you for a great question. Throughout the New Testament, Jesus is emphatically the Son of God and is distinct from God. But there is also a sense, and particularly within the later and the more philosophically oriented texts, that Jesus is divine and has some kind of special relationship with God that allows him to manifest God's presence and God's power. And so in the 2nd and 3rd and 4th and into the 5th century CE, you had Christians coming up with a philosophical framework for understanding how Jesus can be both God and also not God. For the New Testament authors, it did not need to be systematized. The ambiguity, the mystery of it all was okay with them. They were okay with that tension standing. But once Christian apologists had to try to make the gospel more palatable for the Greco-Roman intelligentsia, they needed to systematize it and reduce it down to something that was explainable. They needed a theoretical philosophical framework for explaining how Jesus could both be God and not be God. And that took centuries to develop, but what came out the other end was the Nicene concept of the Trinity, which was developed in 325 CE, uh, and then the concepts from Chalcedon about Jesus as divine and human nature in the century after that. So I would say this development took place between the 2nd and 5th centuries CE.